Hello, I'm Di Cope from Super Lucky and I blog about how to win competitions. Now this video is 10 tips on how to get organised as a compa, which will hopefully help you to be a bit more successful with your hobby. Now keep in mind that these are the tips that I personally use, so some of them might work for you, some of them might not, but hopefully there's loads of good ideas for you to get organised. Tip number one is to file away your receipts and packaging safely. Now, I would hope if you're already a compact, then you do enter purchase necessary competitions. So these are competitions where you need to buy a product in order to enter a prize draw or a competition. And I list these on the compass shopping list on my website, which is really popular with compers. Now it's really important to keep your receipts and also sometimes unique codes, which can be on packaging, neck collars, things like that, keep them safe. Now, what I always recommend is, as soon as you've bought the product to enter the competition, get home and take a photograph of the receipt and ideally the packaging if it's got a unit code or a barcode on it, so you've got it on your phone. Most winners will only need to send a digital copy of the proof of purchase. They won't actually physically need to send any evidence off that they bought it. However, sometimes you do need to send things off in the post, so it's really important to keep it safe. Uh, what I use is one of these Repesco expanding files, just got it on Amazon and it's got 12 monthly sections. So when I've bought something for a competition, I take the photograph on my phone and then I will keep the receipt and the packaging if necessary together and I will put them in the section, the closing date of the promotion. So this proper job promotion closes in September. So I'm just going to tuck it away in the September part of my file. Now, you should keep everything for at least six months. I've actually got two of these files, so at the end of the year, I still keep the previous year's file as it is, and then we'll chuck it out after a full year. Uh, but the reason for that is that not every winner responds to a prize notification. Sometimes agencies will have to contact three or four reserve winners, so it could last for months after the closing day, because usually you should allow a winner 28 days to respond, so you've got to keep all those receipts and packaging for ages just in case you do win. There's also late entry or wrap up draws, which will be months after the promotion closes. And sometimes they ask for receipts for those as well. So that's the number one tip is keep everything somewhere safe. Don't just chuck it in a bag, a pile or a shoe box, make sure everything's safe. And then if you do win an amazing prize, you're not gonna panic because you can't find your receipt. The second tip is to make lists for your comping. So it could be the prizes that you've won, the competitions you want to enter, a list of the friends that you want to tag on social media, a list of the vouchers that you've won in competitions with their expiry dates so you don't forget to use them. Now you can write lists in a notebook, in a diary, in a planner, but what I like to do is just use a free mobile app to do it. It's so much more convenient, it's easy to delete, to replace, to move things around and prioritise on your list. And so I'm going to show you two apps that I use. You can use something like Google Tasks, which syncs with your Google Calendar or even the Notes app on an Apple device. But I like to use Workflowy and Asana for my lists. And I'm going to show you how to use those. The first thing I should mention, though, is the Compass shopping list, which I've already talked about and how to actually use that. So this is a resource that is really, really useful for Compass to get organized. It's on my website. And what I'm going to show you is how to use it. So if you go to um, Super Lucky and the Compass shopping list is linked on the front page of the blog. Now, when you come to the website, you'll need to scroll down to get to the shopping list. And when you get there, you can sort this list. So by default, it's in order of closing dates. So the soonest closing date is going to be at the top of the list. However, you can tap on products and that will then filter it alphabetically, A to Z or Z to A, if you tap it twice. You can filter by store, so if you're going shopping to Asda soon, you can look at all the competitions that are in Asda. You can filter it by closing date and also date added. So if you only check the shopping list every few days, if you tap on date added, it will show you the most recent additions to the list, so anything that you might have missed over the past few days will appear at the top of the list. So I think what most compers do is they will look at the compass shopping list and then they actually curate their own personal shopping list from this. And I use the Workflowy app to do this personally. So if I show you what I do, in Workflowy, I have got lots of different lists. It's 
basically it's a super list. So with Workflowy, um, you can have all sorts of nested lists inside each other. So it actually looks like I haven't got many lists on my screen, but anything that's got a little gray circle around it, you can tap on and it expands into more information and further lists. So you can see here on Workflowy, I've got my shopping list, which has got regular shopping on there. But however, in here, I've got competitions as well. So the star means it's a flashed promotional product that I need to buy or look for at the supermarket. So, and then as you come down, you can see I've also got lists for different shops. So Superdrug, I've got a competition running. On VO5, I've actually put a link in here as well. So if I'm in the shop and I need to check what exactly I need to buy, I can tap on that. It's gonna take me to the Facebook group, find out more about that competition. So Workflow is a great app for things like this. Other things I use it for is down here, I've got prizes to use. Now this is a list of vouchers that I've won and days out. Uh, so I put those in there and an expiry date if necessary as well. So if I'm going shopping or if I remember that I've got cinema tickets somewhere, I can just double check the date here in Workflowy. And as I mentioned before, tagging friends as well. So I've got a comps list here, comp tags, um, Brighton competitions, vegan competitions running. I've got compers in here who want to win the same sort of prizes as me. I've got their usernames here, easy reference on Twitter or Instagram. So if I see running competition and think, who do I tag? I can quickly switch from Instagram to Workflowy and find the right friend to tag. The other app I use to make lists is slightly more complicated because I use it for all my work things to do as well. And it's called Asana. It's also free, the basic version, which is all you need to be honest. And it's really good for repeat tasks. So if I show you Asana, this is my tasks to do list at the moment, my main home screen. Um, so I've got two tasks at the top, which have got due date of the 1st of January. They're actually ongoing projects. And within these, I will um, list radio competitions and links, important links that I need. The top one is my football admin. So I've got all the links in there that I need to find quite regularly. Uh, red tasks are things that I need to do today that I haven't done yet. You'll see I've got a task here. This is the most important one, uh, is daily comps. So this is where I keep a list of everything I want to enter every day. And in here I've got text comps that I want to enter daily. I've got instant wins and I've also got prize draws. Now it looks like a lot. What I do is I actually make bold text, the ones that are the most important to me that I really want to enter every day. So there's some simple instant wins at the moment, the Skittles, Transformers, um, the new Support Her Mars competition that I really want to try and enter every day. And those are my priorities. And the others, not such a high priority, but I'll try and get through them if I can. Uh, I don't usually have a set time to do instant wins. If I wake up very early in the morning, I'll try and do them then because there's a better chance of winning um, or very late at night. But generally, when I've got a spare moment during the day, I'll pop on, open a sign out and just tap to visit these links for each of the competitions. So you can see here, all these blue names are links to the websites. And what's great about Asana is it's really easy to set repeat tasks. So I use it for a lot of the updates that I do on Super Lucky. So I'm constantly updating the list of text competitions, the list of Tesco competitions, winner car competitions, ITV competitions. So I've got repeat tasks in Asana. So when I tick that I've completed it, it will actually pop up again a few days later when I need to go back and make sure that that website, that post is updated again. And of course, the daily comps here in Asana is set to repeat every single day. So when I complete it one day, it will pop up again for the next day. So I never forget to do my daily competitions. Now, that might all be a little bit too complicated for you. And don't worry, because you can just keep a list in a notebook of all the tasks that you want to do every day, current competitions you want to enter. But I do find it easier to use um, lists on apps simply because I've got my phone with me all the time. I find it really easy to add and delete quickly. Once you get used to it, it's pretty simple. Now lists are great for comping, but sometimes you need to include a little bit more information and that's where spreadsheets can be super helpful. I use Google Drive to set up my spreadsheets. So I will show you my comping spreadsheet now on the laptop. Um, so here I track my prizes. So I've got a full list of the prizes that I've won, the value, when I won them, when I've received them, if I've said thank you. Um, and then I've also got previous years. You can see the tabs across the bottom of my spreadsheet. I've got previous years prizes as well. 
So this is my main comping spreadsheet too. So I've also got a list of effort-based or creative competitions that I want to enter. Um, so what I've done here is I've highlighted the ones in yellow that I really want to enter, that I must enter. The others, not quite as urgent. At the top of the spreadsheet, I've got um, regular, weekly, fortnightly, monthly competitions that are ongoing. You can see I've got the list here to see more about the competitions. Uh, and then I've got closing dates on the left and also um, a theme as well. So sometimes there'll be competitions that are based in London and I'll put London in this column here so I know that next time I'm up in London, I'll enter that competition. Um, but I've, I find this quite a good way to track creative competitions because it's rare that I can enter those straight away. So I like to just put the information in this spreadsheet and then just keep track of what's coming up. Um, when I've entered a competition, I will uh, highlight it on here and I will copy it and I will move it to the other tab, which is called Entered. Uh, and then you can just paste at the top here, paste that competition there across the top. I re usually remove the yellow from the background. And then when I find out about a competition, if the winner has been announced and it wasn't me, I will change it to red. Um, if the winner's been announced and it is me, I change it to green to show that I've won that particular competition. So I will pop back here every so often and if there's, you know, if there's white bars across there, I'll try and investigate and check that actually a winner was informed for those competitions if I've got time. Um, yes, yeah, so I find this a really handy way to just add a bit more detail and links and have a lot of information in one place. Um, I know a lot of compers do use this to track purchase necessary competitions. That's not something that I do uh, simply because I usually know what's going on with purchase necessary competitions. I add all the details to um, the compass shopping list. I know the terms and conditions. I've got them on my simple shopping list. I don't feel like I need a spreadsheet to monitor entering those. Um, but I know a lot of compers do like to do that. And some of them even, um, they upload their receipt photos to Google Drive as well. So you can do that if you want to. Um, but yes, yeah, spreadsheets, I have got another YouTube guide and a blog post with full info on how to use spreadsheets for your comping, uh, which I will link in the description as well if you find that useful. Tip four is to use an online calendar to record closing dates, special event days, Facebook Lives for competitions, things like that. I use Google Calendar, but you can also use Apple's iCal too. And also if you do use Google Calendar, then if you use the Google Tasks app as your list app, then that will synchronize with the calendar with all your repeat comping tasks and things like that. Now I have set up a calendar in Google that you can subscribe to and it's got in comping event days. So, um, you know, things like World Gin Day, Best Friends Day, um, Blue Monday, things like that that happen and there's loads of competitions to do with all those special days. So um, let me show you on the phone how to find that. So if I show you first um, the how the calendar app works. So this is my Google Calendar app. I've turned off all my personal calendars and work calendars at the moment. So uh, you'll just see in grey here, This are these are comping calendar. Um, events that I put in, National Bingo Day is coming up, World Chocolate Day, Ice Cream Day, Emoji Day. Now all these things you will have brands jumping on the bandwagon running giveaways to do with these days. They're good to look for on social media. If, you're, if you can find the time on those days to enter competition, you usually find quite a few of those. Um, now let me show you how to subscribe to this calendar so you will get updates and you can get all those dates on your, your own Google Calendar. So to subscribe, if I just take you into Chrome here, and if you just type in this web address, it's bit.ly, so this is a short link, bit.ly and slash, and you want to go to Comping Calendar with two capital Cs, Comping Calendar, uh, and then that will come up on the screen, and then the bottom right of the screen, you can just tap on the plus sign, and that will open your calendar app. Obviously, I can't do it here because I'm already subscribed to it, but it will open up an option for you to subscribe to my comping calendar. And every time I make changes or make additions to that comping calendar, it will push those notifications and those updates to you as well. So hopefully you'll find that useful. Um, but yeah, as I say, calendar is a really good way of organizing yourself too. 
Now the next tip, if you don't like using online calendars and you prefer writing things down, you could use a planner. Uh, this is my bootcamp planner, which I designed specifically for compers. Um, so it is an annual planner with a week per page, uh, but it's also got loads of challenges in that you can do. There's loads of room for lists in here as well. So you can get a list of your tagging mates, a wish list of the kind of prizes that you want to win. Um, every week there's spaces to write down the competitions you want to enter, the prizes that you've won. Uh, you can tally up the competitions you're doing each day. Um, so you might find this a really good way of getting organised if you're the kind of person who likes writing things down. So um, you can get that on Amazon and if you do buy it you get access to my special Facebook group as well uh, where I do special live Q&As and share bonus tips and videos for all the boot campers. Um, so yeah, hopefully that might be something that you're interested in, but that is also a great way of keeping organized and keeping track of everything that you're doing and all the prizes that you're winning too. So the next tip is to build comping habits. So it can be tricky to get into a routine, but really you should be doing a little bit of comping every day, building those habits, and then you'll be more successful if you are doing it regularly. So there's a number of ways you can do this. Um, use your calendar, use reminders, alarms, tasks, things, anything that will remind you to get into that habit of doing something daily. So for example, in the morning, the first thing I do is put on the radio station in case there's a competition. I'll also check into Lucky Learners to see if there's news of any other breakfast show competitions on the radio, new competitions I need to know about. Um, after my breakfast, I always check Compass News Forum to see if there's any new stuff on there. Um, if I'm making a cup of tea while I'm waiting for my, my tea to brew, I'll do a few phone calls to cash register or make me a winner, the free calls that you can do. Things like that, just little habits that you kind of get into every evening. If we're watching TV or a football match, I'll open Instagram and do all my Instagram comps then. Um, those are the things that, you know, it's helping comping to become a part of your daily life. Um, what I do also is set alarms on my phone. So um, I've got an alarm for make me a winner and cash register that goes off at three o'clock every day while that's on. And that's just a reminder to have your phone nearby in case you do get the winning phone call. Um, but you can put things like that in your calendar as well. Um, also weekly, if there's competitions you can enter every week, I have a task set up in Asana for that, but you might want to have a special alarm on a Wednesday morning that reminds you with a list of all the competitions that you need to enter weekly, your text competitions, prize draws, things like that. There's also tasks like visiting your favorite Facebook comping groups or doing searches for your wish list prizes, things that really you want to be doing regularly. So you can set like a weekly or a fortnightly reminder in your calendar to do those as well. Tip seven is to set up browser bookmarks. I love browser bookmarks. And I do most of my work and most of my comping and blogging on my MacBook. And bookmarks are more useful if you actually use a desktop computer or a laptop. However, you can set them up and use them quite efficiently on mobile and tablet too. I find them just so handy to save things. So I'm gonna show you quite a lot of the different ways that I use bookmarks on my Mac. So they're really time saving. So for example, if you wanna find Facebook posts, I've got a bookmarks bar across the top of my Mac with shortcuts in to get to uh, Twitter, YouTube, my blog, but also it's got folders. And in the folders, this one here, for example, has got quick links to all these Facebook posts in my Lucky Learners group. So all the different competition posts, I can just zip there really quickly by using these bookmarks. A great idea for bookmarks as well is to save all the competition websites you go to uh, regularly um, to save daily entry competitions, especially for advent comps, it's really helpful. A great way of opening all tabs at once is if you control and click or right mouse click on a folder, you can open all, all those bookmarks in new tabs. So for example, these are all my radio competitions. So I would set it to do that, go and do something else, come back in a couple of minutes when they've all loaded, and then I can quickly flick through every tab and see what the latest competitions are on every radio station. So that's a really handy way to use bookmarks. I've got resources in here as well. So purchase necessary resources I can go through and check for competitions. I've got my Google searches in here. So the prizes on my wish list. I can go wish list searches, food and drink, and then every couple of weeks I can click on these links and see what the latest results are for all my wish list prizes. So delivery credit, for example. So these are really just 
great ways of using bookmarks. So, and saving bookmarks. So when you want to save a bookmark, you just go to bookmarks at the top and bookmark this tab. And then you just choose the folder that it goes into. And then obviously you can set up new folders, things like that as well. So I have done a bigger guide to bookmarks on my blog, which you can check out. And there's a couple of videos as well in the Boot Compass group, which you might find helpful, depending whether you use Safari or Chrome. Another tip if you use a computer is to set up startup pages. So in Google Chrome, if you click on the three dots at the top and you can go to settings, and on the left hand side, it says on startup. So if you click this, you can set up the pages that open when you first log into your computer in the morning. So when you reboot your computer, you can go into your browser, it's gonna have the pages that you tell it are the most important. So I've got my super lucky spreadsheet, my comping spreadsheet, lucky learners, pick my postcode, um, and I've also got in the extra gum daily competition and then at the bottom you can click add a new page and then you can add any you know a daily competition that you want to visit every day you can pop in there or anything you want really and then they will open every day when you start up your computer so that's a really good way of just reminding yourself to enter a daily competition too Tip number eight is organizing the photographs on your phone. So if you're anything like me, you've probably got thousands of photographs and it's really helpful to create albums to store them in. So I have got um, a folder called competitions on my phone. So if I show you that, I've got a folder where I keep receipts. Um, I've also got folders uh, I've got disasters, Halloween, random entries, food and drink. So anything that's sort of creative that I might need to use for a competition or add to a social media um, comment because quite often you just want to make your entry stand out on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook. So you might have a photograph that you can add to it. So a photograph of something funny or your family or your pet or your home or a favorite holiday photo, anything like that. And what you want is to be able to find it quickly on your phone. So if you store that in an album, you're going to be able to get there straight away and find the exact photograph that you're looking for. Um, the tip as well is, I, I mentioned earlier about always taking a photograph of your receipt straight away. Um, you can add information to your receipt as well. So if I show you this co-op receipt that I got yesterday, tap on the eye at the bottom of the screen and then you can add a caption here. So you can add in co-op and then the products that are on it. So you can add in LucasAid and that's also got skips on it and Coke. And then tap done and that saves it. Now, if you go back to your um, recent album and you tap on search, so you can search in here just for the word LucasAid and you can see I've got four results here. I've got the receipt that I just tagged with that text, but it's also picked up the word LucasAid in three other photos that I've got on my album. So this is a really clever thing that iPhones do and it just scans text in photographs to find stuff. So this is a really good way of being organized if you need to find things, file things. So it's it's also something you can do if you're stuck somewhere with no Wi-Fi or mobile data um, and if you just got a bit of time on your hands. So go in, delete photos that you don't need, anything that looks like it's useful for competitions, put a bit of information or a tag or a caption on it or file it into a folder so you can find it quickly and easily. Don't waste time swiping through thousands of photographs trying to find that photograph that you always use for competitions. Something else I do as well with photos is all day long I'll be taking photographs. So I'm taking photographs of competitions I see in the supermarket, at the bus stop, in magazines, but I'll also take loads of screenshots. So um, if I'm on social media, somebody's messaged me a competition, if I see something on Instagram and I haven't got time to deal with it there and then or to copy a link, I will simply take a screenshot. So on an iPhone, taking a screenshot of something is um, basically just pressing the buttons on either side of the phone. Um, you can also set it so that if you double tap on the back of the phone, that takes a screenshot as well. So um, that's a good shortcut, a tip you can use. And then what I do is, one of my daily habits is at the end of the day, I will go through the photographs I've got on my camera roll on my phone and I will basically file and organize them. So if I've got photos of new competitions, I'll add them to the shopping list or I'll put them in Lucky Learners or I'll add them to my spreadsheet. 
uh, but I will clear that out every day to make sure that anything that I've spotted during the day has been dealt with and either entered the competition or I've filed it somewhere else. Um, so that is how I get organized using the gallery on my iPhone and I do find screenshots really helpful particularly with this ability to be able to search them for keywords now too. Tip nine is to organize your email inbox. So this is the side effect of comping. You're gonna to get tons of emails. You're gonna get newsletters, you're gonna get spam, you're gonna get junk, but you're also hopefully gonna get winning emails. And the idea is that you keep on top of your email inbox, keep it clear so that when things come in, when newsletters come in with a competition, when a winning notification comes in, you're gonna spot it straight away rather than it just being one of another 10,000 emails in your inbox. So getting your inbox organized. I use Mac Mail. I'll show you how I organize my inbox, but you probably use Gmail or Hotmail. It's gonna be different. There will be similarities. So folders are what I use. So I organize everything into home, comps, football, Ryland, finances. Everything in my inbox goes into one of these folders or gets dealt with, or I unsubscribe, clear it out of the inbox. So. In Mac, they're called mailboxes. So you go to mailbox at the top and you can create a new mailbox and you know you can just call it, um, I'm gonna select where to put it. So PN comps for purchase necessary comps, for example. Um, so that creates a new folder and then you can just simply, um, you can drag emails into your folders. So um, if I just drag that into comps enter just to show you how it works. So that's how you can use and file into folders. You can also use preferences at the top here, mail preferences, and it will automatically file into folders. You can see I've got loads of rules here. They might not look very organized. So um, for example, there's one here, Beaver Town, that would file Beaver Town emails into my newsletters folder. So if there's brands that you like and you don't want to unsubscribe from their newsletters, you can just put the newsletters somewhere else and look through them when you've got a bit more time. Um, other things you might want to do, you can see that this um, message here is highlighted in green and there's some others here as well. I've set a rule to highlight something in green if it's got the words congratulations, um, winner and runner up I think. So if I go into preferences and you can see here the green WEM, if I edit that there you go, so you can see subject with congratulations or the message content contains congratulations winner or runner up, it will set color of the email to green. So I can quickly go to my inbox and see if there's anything that might possibly be a winning email in there. And even if it's not a winning email, quite often if it's been flagged up, it's gonna have a competition in there. So even if it's not in the subject, you can expect to see something. So here, look, we'd like you to be a part of a prize draw and win a goodie box. So that's a competition in there. So um, I'm gonna put that in comps to do and look at it later. So that's another way you can use rules just to separate things out in your inbox. Now, how about actually clearing out emails? Now, I haven't got a lot of junk at the moment because I did have a clear out, um, but you can go into your inbox and you can filter it and sort it. So if you go to view at the top, you can sort by uh, the date received. It might be easier to sort it into who it's from. And then you can see who's sending you loads of newsletters and unsubscribe from those. Or you can see the spam that you're getting. You know, you get emails like this that are just exactly the same and you can delete them. Um, but that might be a way to go through and you can just bulk delete emails from the same sender to sort out your inbox. And then with what you've got left, you can do a search. So if you search in your junk folder, again, for the word congratulations to make sure you're not missing anything important. Um, no, there's nothing in there. You might also want to do winner and competition as well. So if you do this search on everything, if it's not coming up with anything, then I would suggest you can safely delete everything in that junk folder because I don't think there's anything important in there for you. So it might take you a few sessions to actually clear your inbox, but if you get into that habit of checking daily and deleting, unsubscribing, filing, then you should be able to keep on top of it and you'll find it easier to spot competitions that pop up in there as well. So the last tip I'm gonna give you is just to make sure that you're using autofill and keyboard shortcuts to save time. Get organized by getting all that in order and then when you start comping, you're gonna be able to get through comps a lot quicker and be a lot more efficient. 
So autofill is built into most browsers now. Just make sure that your details are correct and that if you are do have the option to autofill that you tap that button to do it. There's only one or two publications that actually don't allow autofill on their competitions. I think it used to be Hello Magazine. So don't worry about that. It's actually preferred for people to use autofill because you're not making mistakes in the addresses or phone numbers or emails, which obviously can happen when you're typing things, you make mistakes. And talking of mistakes, it's a good idea to make keyboard shortcuts for the things that you're typing all the time. Keyboard shortcuts, I bang on about these all the time, but they really do save you loads of comping time. Um, on an iPhone, go to settings, and then you go to general and keyboard, and it's called text replacement. Um, so in here, basically you set uh, a few letters or just a tiny little phrase that will expand into a long phrase. So a really useful one to do, um, I'll just make up an example here is, for your address, to make sure that you never type your address incorrectly, um, actually set up a shortcut for this because you'll need to reply to DMs on social media um, to let people know, you know, where to send the prize and things like that. So I'm putting in an address here, 37 Elm Road, and my shortcut is going to be 37E. So I'm going to save that. Oh, not contain spaces. I'm going to delete the space that I just put in. So that's now saved. So if I go to Twitter, for example, um, and then let's just, um, well, I'll just, I'll just show you as it was if I was tweeting it. I wouldn't be tweeting it, obviously, but if I just type now on the keyboard, 37E, there's my address. And it saved me loads of time and there's no mistakes in it. So you can reply to a winning message quickly with your address. You can put that at the bottom of an email entry. It's there ready to go and you don't need to worry about it. So I suggest that you put that in for your full postal address. That saves you some time. So how I use shortcuts most of the time is to tag friends on Instagram. To be honest, I've got loads of them set up and it means I can rattle through competitions really quickly. So for example, here's a competition. Um, you need to follow the accounts, which I'll do quickly, I already am, and like this post tag of friends. So when I add the comment, I'm just gonna type in ITN, um, which is short for Instagram Natalie, and if I put a space there, it expands into tagging my friend Nat, and then job done. So how quick is that compared to typing the whole phrase? So get organized, set up these phrases in your keyboard shortcuts, that's gonna save you tons of time. Now I cover this in detail in my other videos, um, 10 tips for Twitter comping and in Instagram comping tips as well. So if you watch those two videos, if you use those platforms, you're going to get loads of tips and advice and time saving things on there as well. I hope these tips have been helpful and you've found some new ideas just to get organised for your comping, but maybe for your day-to-day -day life as well. Who knows? If you've got any more tips, please leave them in the comments. Let me know about them. Um, send me any questions you've got. I'll see you in the Lucky Learners group and in the Boot Compass group. And if you found this video useful, please do give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends as well. And good luck with your comping.